Welcome back to my high school course in AP Economics. This is Dr. Klein, and today I want to talk about aggregate supply and demand. Now, aggregate supply and demand is basically a diagram that's used to organize the thinking about uh, GDP and the price level, uh, and it's used to organize I'd say it's used by most mainstream economists to, do, to organize their thinking. I happen not to like it, but I won't get into that. I'll just teach it as if I were another mainstream economist. Um, maybe some other time I'll get into my issues with it. Okay, so let me draw it in a couple ways. Now, we have not had supply and demand. This and The supply and demand that is traditional in economics where we talk about the law of, law of supply and demand that's microeconomics right now we're doing macroeconomics and so it's a little different it happens to have some uh, rough similarities but we won't worry about those since we haven't talked about the microeconomics I'll explain the macroeconomics without thinking about microeconomics supply and demand I want to draw it two ways And let me let me draw two ways of drawing the aggregate supply. I'm going to draw one with three line segments, and then I'm going to sort of smooth that out and curve it. So this is just two ways of trying to draw the same thing, and we'll call it aggregate supply. And you can remember it maybe that supply slopes up supply s u p p l y supply supply slopes up so that's called so a s stands for aggregate aggregate supply and what it really <coughs> i don't know that it measures any behavior necessarily well it, it I can uh, it there is a behavioral interpretation but uh, what it really gives is an indication of capacity utilization in the economy so where in with, I'm going to have three regions here I'll call this region one region two and region three now obviously they're more smoothed out in this in this version of the aggregate supply Okay, region one is a recession region. Recession with lots of excess capacity. Capacity and unemployment. So that's kind of a seems to be a pretty dis good description of where we are now. So maybe I will draw an aggregate demand curve in that region now. And the equivalent would be somewhere over here. Okay, so that's AD. So let me... Um, where am I going to put AD? I'll just say AD is aggregate demand. And it sort of comes from all the things that we've been talking about before. Things like, uh, <clears throat> you know, the the spending drivers. Or the, so all the things that drive spending. Remember, we had fiscal policy. We said that interest rates. Remember, we could lower interest rates, and that would raise investment or improve the trade balance. So that determines this aggregate demand. So aggregate demand is this this thing here. And the difference between these this region 1, region 2 and region 3 is the way that a shift in aggregate demand will affect output. I might have to draw a bigger graph to show this, or some other graphs, but let me 
let me finish with one, two, and three. So region one, region two, uh, I'll just call the in between. So it's neither a deep recession nor sort of overheated. So some excess capacity, but not much. And then region three, which you'll recall is here where the, the curve is more vertical, is no excess capacity, full employment. So back here in the recession, the unemployment, uh, they would say lots of unemployment in region one with the recession. In the in-between two, there's, again, a little bit, some unemployment, some excess unemployment, but not as much as in a recession. And again, some excess capacity, but not as much as in a recession where there's lots of excess capacity. And in our Region 3, in our overheated, overheated economy, there's no excess capacity. We're at full employment. So where these three different regions matter is in what happens if you shift aggregate demand. So let's have one cur one of these things. Okay, Y is GDP, by the way. P is the a measure of aggregate prices. I don't think I even talked about that before. So but remember in the lecture on GDP calculations, we had the GDP deflator. So think of this as the GDP deflator. So, okay. Now, our, let's put our three regions in here. One, two, three. One, two, three. And now what happens if we start out here and we raise aggregate demand. That means we shift it to the right. So things that can shift aggregate demand to the right or increase aggregate demand would be uh, more G, higher sp government spending, tax cuts, lower taxes, and lower interest rates. So those are the three things that we've learned about so far <coughs> that can shift aggregate demand to the right. If we did the opposite, then we would shift aggregate demand to the left. So if we wanted to go to the left, we would have we could use less government spending, more taxes, or higher interest rates. Okay, but we're shifting to the right, so we shifted to the right, and in region one, in a recession, what happens? We get more output and sort of unchanged prices, unchanged GDP deflator. Now let's see what would happen if we did the same thing in region two. So we'll go to region two. Again, we have prices, we have GDP. We have our peculiar shaped aggregate supply curve with our three regions. And now we're going to start out with aggregate demand somewhere in the second region in the sort of in-between economy and we're going to draw we're going to shift it to the right call that aggregate demand prime shift it to the right and now we get 
more GDP and higher prices. So if we start out with less excess capacity, an economy that's uh, closer to normal, not maybe not at full employment, not at full capacity utilization, we get a combination of higher output and higher prices. So uh, we're probably happy about this, not so happy necessarily about uh, having raised prices. So uh, <clears throat> back when we had the recession, raising aggregate demand gave us this more output unchanged prices it was just it it was it seemed like a great thing to do it had there was sort of no almost no trade off no cost to raising aggregate demand and now in this second region well there's a, we're paying a little bit of a of a cost in terms of higher prices but it still seems like a nice thing to do then the third region is this kind of vertical region um, and if the demand aggregate demand curve starts here and we shift it to the right we shift it to the right now we get higher prices <laughs> and unchanged output and so that's of no help at all we're just kind of causing inflation but we're not reducing unemployment we're not getting more output so this is probably a bad idea here so you know tip so on the AP you might be asked a question about whether it's a good idea to raise aggregate demand or what kind of aggregate demand policy would be appropriate and you'd better, <coughs> to answer that question, you'd better understand whether you're being given that it's in the, this region, this re the third region, the second region, or the first region. And they'll, and they'll tell you, they'll indicate that, well, the economy is at full, at full employment, which would suggest that you're here. Or they'll say you're in a recession, which suggests you're in region one, and so on. So that's really the point of the aggregate supply aggregate demand story is to uh, distinguish the effect of aggregate demand policies uh, show that they have different effects in the three different regions I'm going to add one other little footnote to this which is that there's kind of something called a classical or neoclassical model of macro and this will occasionally get mentioned in the AP classical or neoclassical model of macro and what in that in some sense says that uh, we're always the economy always acts as if it were in region three so it always acts as if and this one two and three is kind of my notation don't expect that you'll you, the the standard terminology would be recession or uh, uh, full employment would be the description of region three and somewhere in between, so they'll articulate it somewhere in between being in a deep recession and being at full employment to be number two. But I, I use numbers. Um, and the classical or neoclassical view is that the economy always acts as if it's in region three. So even if we were in a recession, if you believe the neoclassical story, it would the supply curve would look like this and <coughs> the um, 
And as a result, aggregate demand won't increase output, it'll just increase price.